Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, L.A. by Night. At the heart of all communication lies the story, the holder of dreams and hopes, hatreds and fears, passions and mysteries, what we are, what we will be, and what we hope to be all comes to us and from us in this form, the story. L.A. by Night is a story about vampires. Remember this above all else. It's a story about what it means to be these creatures suffering from an inexplicable curse and cast into an unforgiving, nocturnal, and perhaps eternal existence. It's also a story about what these creatures can teach us about what it is to be human. Tonight, we invite you to share with us Season 5, Episode 9, It Is the Tale. This episode is a series of short conversations, epilogues, vignettes that take place after the events of this season. We have worked with each player on these scenes, but the choices that they're about to make are entirely their own. With this firmly in mind, let's tell a vampire story. We begin tonight with our first conversation. Where are we? On the beach um, in Santa Monica, near mm. the pier, but far enough away from the crowd. But you can see the lights of Santa Monica Pier from here on the beach. You can see the, the brightly lit Ferris wheel, the booths, the people excited, alive. We've carved out a little niche for ourselves in the sand. Hmm. Are you close to the water? Yeah. Animal's got her feet buried in the sand and is absentmindedly covering them, uncovering them, covering them, uncovering them, missing the smell of the salt waves, and still see all of the vendors with the churros and the funnel cake and hear the noise of the arcade from here still. It's almost peaceful. <sighs> Why? Why aren't you mad at me? Because I don't blame you. You should. We are not the beasts that drive us. And I think that your beast needed closure with your sire and you know 
We all have issues with our sire. I don't know who my sire is. I never have, and I don't know, it just, it feels like I don't want to give anything to the beast. I, I don't want it to have that satisfaction. And what I did, I planned it the whole time. I'm, a, I'm bad on the inside and outside and all over. And it was just to fight someone that ended up getting away. And she's always in here anyway. I actually always thought Therese was your sire. So that's why I thought, you know, revenge against Therese. She's always we there. Could maybe she's not just... say that name anymore. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know. It could be. But I'm afraid of what that means for me. But I shouldn't be. I should... Why aren't you mad at me? Why? You should punch me. You should throw me into that wall. Would it make you feel better? I don't know. I don't want Hit me. To... Not really. No, no don't. No, I don't want I, you to I do that. No. You know how hard I can I hit you. X. We all are victims. I understand what it is to be compelled by something inside of you that wants you to do bad things. And we are both fighting the same system. But I won. I got what I wanted. I wanted her out of there. And I wanted to rule with Jeanette. I didn't want to rule. You didn't. But you didn't. she was my friend, and she's always been there for me, but she just kept reminding me of her, and I would have to do whatever she said, and I had to get out of there, but I got out of there and ended up at Jesus camp and almost died, and, and then you were there. You gotta get better friends, X. You're very much... You take on the personalities and the traits of those around you. I mean, as part of your power, but also maybe that's what you did in life too. We're not who made us. We are not our worst selves. We are who we want to be. And I see how much you want to be good. You've always been there for Jasper. But I'm such a bad friend to Jasper. What happened to you? Who are you and what have you done with Annabelle? <laughs> um, it's a combination, I think, of spending a lot of time with Carver, seeing all the things that I didn't want to be, learning things that I needed to survive, and probably just more comfort with trauma the further away you get from it the more you can process it and I think for years after I died I was I had PTSD and again there are no cognitive mental services to deal with this in our world so I just had to kind of stumble through it on my own, thrown into the middle of a war uh, with, with some sort of uh, title that was foisted on me with, with nothing but my spirit of rebellion to shield me and give me purpose. It sounds familiar. It sucks. But the further away that I got from that traumatic event, the more that I realized what I wanted, the more I realized what I had to do. And one of the huge ones was choose your words wisely I think I need to get away yeah I th think I do too a little before we go though I'm I know this is awkward and there are a lot of people around but maybe could I could I feed on you real quick I just I haven't eaten since Adrian and what uh, 
I know. I got it under control, though. I have, I'm fine. It's, Jeanette helped me hone some of the right. stuff, and so I don't break so easily anymore. But I'm really hungry. Max, you haven't eaten in that long. Oh, my God. Yes, yeah. Yes. Just a little. Just, to... just. I trust you. It's. I trust you right now. And I feed. So, your fangs pierce the flesh, the undead flesh, and what should be a rush of intensely pleasurable vitae fills your mouth. But, unlike other times that you have fed from kindred, Mm. it's tasteless and watery and completely unfulfilling. And Annabelle, unlike other occasions in which you may have been fed from, feels like absolutely nothing. You do not remove any hunger dice. You remain at your current level of hunger. It slakes no thirst. What happened? Are are you okay? I think I'm broken. No. Oh my god. Oh my god! Hmm. Fuck! Fuck! X! X! Wake up! I text Jasper. You text Jasper, what is the message? X needs help. X needs help. I will make a note. And I think we will pause here and we will look in on our next conversation. You know I love you, right? Yeah. I I love you. Lately, I feel like loving you is turning in, turning me into the person I hate the most. Um, okay. Things I would do for you. I, I wish I wouldn't. Yeah. Um. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that, that makes sense. It's not like I hadn't noticed you acting different. I just... I don't think I can survive if I keep doing this. I don't know if I can survive even if I don't. I don't want you to... I'd rather have you, um... I'd rather have you be able to live with yourself than... We're past that. Here, I guess. You don't need me either. You're not often wrong, but I think you are this time. I've dug myself into a hole, and I don't think there's any getting back out. I don't want to take you with me. I do love you. I promise. Yep. 
And I'm only going to hurt us both. best for you. I get that. Give me this goodbye. This conversation takes place in Hollywood. Uh, where in Hollywood are we? I would prefer to be at the Roosevelt Hotel in a larger suite. One of the larger, more palatial suites yes. at the Roosevelt Hotel in the heart of the Hollywood neighborhood. Famous landmark known for its opulence and its uh, rooftop pool parties. So in this suite, we find you and a few moments later, a familiar bruised face pokes its head in to the doorway. Yeah, a hey, uh, Nelly. He's here. Should I show him in or not? Absolutely. Or should I kick his ass? That uh, remains to be determined. Your call. Bring him in. I'll be right outside. Thank you. Okay, like I promised, you can talk to her, but I'm right outside. Thank you, Greg. All right. Greg Demetrios excuses himself, closes the door to the suite, knocks on it once so that you know he's still there. Well, well, it's you in the flesh. <laughs> yes. We meet at last. Mm-hmm. What do you want? <laughs> I want an understanding. I want, we'll call it a professional relationship mm -hmm. to exist between us. Fascinating. I activate awe. Mm, no rouse check required so you don't get hungrier and from the perspective of Agent Drew Handler, Nellie is even more attractive, alluring, and appealing than usual. Uh, I'm yes. Not entirely sure where I was going with that. I see. You want to start at the top again? Sure. Uh, this is. This is a nice place. I know, I know. It's uh, handed down to me. It's beautiful. You look... Incredible. I know. Right. Uh, brain. Mm -hmm. Work. Words. Yeah. Uh, what do you, what do you think of Demetrios? I love him. He's one of our best agents. Truly. I'm here to make a deal. Okay. What sort of deal? Like I said, I, I think that, uh, I think, uh, I think we can come to, uh, an understanding, uh, professionally, of course. Oh. Or what sort of understanding are you trying to get to? I'm not going to stop. I want you to know that I'm back in charge and I'm going to continue the hunt. And I want you to make it ever so difficult for me. 
I can arrange that. You can? Hmm, absolutely. But how am I gonna actually trust you? There's a saying that uh, you may recall that humanity has. It's best to trust the devil that you know. Hmm. <laughs> as long as I'm in play, something worse won't come through that door. How long do you think you're going to last in sad position? <laughs> How old are you? 30? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. So you think that you can last another 30 years, you think? At least. And then who's going to walk through the door then? Well, that's future Drew's problem, isn't it? I guess so. All right, present Drew. You want to work with me, that's fine. I have plenty of things that I can do around here. What is it exactly that you want me to do to make it hard for you? I want you to... I want you to not be public about your actions. Huh. When something happens, you have business to attend to. You have uh, dealings that you blanks... Uh, <clears throat> sorry. That you tend to. I don't want to know about it immediately. I want to work. I want to scratch and claw my way to the truth. Because that is what gets me up in the morning. <laughs> I'm interested to see what gets you up in the evening too, but at any rate, I can help with that situation. Thank you. And in return, in return I'll give you a, a fight from time to time, a challenge, which I understand that uh, you appreciate. Absolutely, I do love a challenge. So these parameters that you're speaking of, so no being out in public, is that what you're asking for? You're asking me to kind of go underground, as you say? Lay low. Keep things relatively quiet. If you go around posting flyers about your uh, dealings, like some of you have been known to do, I'll have no choice. I apologize, I don't post flyers flyers about my dealings. That is a valley situation, not a Hollywood situation. Sure, sure. I understand. In Hollywood, you do business Yes. more intelligently. We dialogue here. Huh. That's good. Alright. Hey! Greg sticks his uh, head in the door. Next one's ready for you. You good? I am. It seems our time is up. Unfortunately. Thank you. You're welcome, and I hope I don't see you around. I hope I don't see you first. Hmm. Doubt it. Oh, God. Let's go. Lead the way. Come on. <laughs> Greg squirts Agent Handler out of the suite, closes the door behind him. From here, we move on to our next vignette. Hey, thank you. Oh, hey. Do you know uh, all kinds of stuff in this book, not just Thin Blood Apocalypse? Yeah. It's a reading about the moon beasts. <laughs> Werewolves? Yeah, 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 no, they're in there. They're in there. They're in there. They're yeah. In there. yeah, that's, uh, <clears throat> hey, we haven't had a chance to, uh, since all of that. Sorry for taking off the way that I did. Did what you had to do. We all did what we have to do. Thank you for looking out for me. You know, Jasper brings up a good point that I was lucky to have had a group show me the ropes, take me in, pay for all of the destruction that I caused around town. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, as weird as it seems to say, especially in light of everything, especially in light of all of this, I, I can't help but feel like it was somehow meant to be. <laughs> yeah, 
if you believe in that sort of thing. I think that, you know, there's a, there's a good man inside of you. That, uh... As good as circumstances warrant. How are you doing? That I heard. It's, uh... It's lots of process. We do what we gotta do, right? Whatever it takes to survive. Victor, I, uh, excuse me if I'm out of line here, but I worry about you. I have had a taste now of what it feels like to lose lose a bit of um, myself. Mm -hmm. What it is to be what we are. And in feeling that, you know, I, I have a better understanding of what happens with you and all the times that we've sort of clashed. But I do worry that as you're growing older, more powerful and wiser, that you also are losing a little bit of the good man inside you. Uh, <laughs> it's the proof of who you really are is in the midst of all of this, in the midst of all of this swirling shitstorm, you still want to check in and make sure that I'm all right? Yeah, of course. You know, uh, from the night we met, from the night we found you there on Griffin College campus to now, 100%, 100% of the things I did not want to happen have happened. I... <laughs> You're right. You're right about a lot of it. I it's true. didn't want you to know what this is like. I didn't want you to feel this. I realized I told you at some point you have to learn to pull the trigger and I meant it. Yeah. But it should never be easy and I'd be lying to you if I said it's difficult for me to do. I don't, I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen to any of us. You care, you know, I, I, I think I was new. It's, it's just that after hanging out with shit dad for a whole lot of time, I have a much better appreciation of, uh, you know, not a shit dad. Well, I appreciate that. And you know, I, wait, is this going to burn me if I touch this? Oh, you have my consent. You know, I, I, I do love you. I love you too, Victor. And uh, I don't know what's coming, but we'll get through it like we always do, right? And even when we're apart, still together. Night in Santa Monica, on the beach, in a lifeguard watchtower that has been prepared against daylight. Hi. Hi. So. What's going on? I haven't, um... I haven't... I haven't been a good friend to you. And I'm sorry. Because uh, you've been nothing but the best for me. Oh, uh, alright. I don't see it that way, but okay. And also, I haven't been able to feed since Adrian. The, uh... Uh, yeah, okay. I tried to... I kind of tried to eat him a little. Uh, that's fair. But then, I couldn't feed on him either. It turned to... It turned to ash. Okay. Not good. And every time... Every time I try, it's... It's, it's the same thing. Right. <laughs> okay. 
It's getting bad, Jasper. You're... You're not eating. Okay. I can't. Right. You can't. Something happened. I... Okay. Yeah, they had they had powers. They the 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 the, the, the holy uh, whatever their faith. I okay, something. Um, right. I can't stop this. And I think I think I need a break. I think I need just a little break. I think I need to get away. I think I need to. I think I need your help again. Yeah, whatever you need. I think I should go. I think I should go under the water. Oh, yeah. When, when we were there before. Yeah. It's, when I, when I went, I didn't know any better and I, I made a, a child. Right, okay. And Therese helped me and they, we put him down there. But she... I didn't... It's a good way to take care of a kindred. Yeah. Yeah. A wise person said to me recently that I'm a reflection of those... the company I keep. I like myself the best when I'm with you. Then, uh, you must be a very dirty mirror. I need polishing, and you're the one that can help me. If you could put me back together, I can... Okay. But I'm broken. Okay. I, um, I'll, 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 I'll figure it out. <laughs> just a pause, just a, a little, just a... It's coming anyway. Right, you're gonna, yeah. It's like a tunnel, like a dark tunnel. And I just keep slipping down, but I'm the only voice in here right now. solution. Okay. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. X. You are the best friend I've ever had. And you're the only one that's still around. So I'm gonna fix it. And when you wake up, The reflection will be better. We'll go dancing on the moon. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll get different shoes. I can feel it. Come on, I'll take you there. And we're gonna walk from the lifeguard booth and straight into the water. So you're going to exit <clears throat> the lifeguard watchtower and wade into the restless, ever-churning waters of the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. You have both been here before together. Yeah. X, can you take us down? Below the murky sand, there's a hatch. And before, as far as I can remember, you were able to open it. But it's not closed right now. The hatch is open, which is not <clears throat> what you expected to find. Okay. We start going in. Hmm. The concrete space box, coffin, is large enough for X and perhaps one other, but it is currently empty. 
You see a flash of worry and fear over X's face, but it's quickly dissipated. There are manacles that are attached to the wall. In the low gravity of under the water, he starts shackling himself. Help with the other. It's a strange sensation to be down here in the in the dark, feeling the restless motion of the sea around you. X attached to the wall of the chamber that he has evidently himself used previously and prepared. Hmm. X, you can feel it. You can feel it ever more strongly. The pull to sleep, the deep dive into torpor. When a kindred has no vitae within their body with which to rouse themselves at night, they have no choice but to sleep and down into torpor you go. I, um, I climb back out and I go up and I close the hatch. You close the hatch and use the mechanism to bolt it shut. Yeah. Do you recover it? I recover it. Hmm. Uh, well, it'll be covered by the tide anyway. It doesn't really matter, but I make a note of where it is. You are able to take a sighting based on the location of the lifeguard watchtower. You could find it again quite easily. And I just stand under the water. It's peaceful down here. You can see the lights of Santa Monica, the Ferris wheel, playing off the surface of the sea above you. It's quiet. Very, very quiet. This is where we'll end our scene. This scene takes place east of downtown Los Angeles in a medical facility that isn't easy to find unless you know what and who to look for. And here we find the undisputed Baron of the Valley at the bedside of a figure, his son, Mark, who is unconscious, connected to life monitoring equipment. Also in the room, Nines Rodriguez, looking substantially the worse for wear. Rodriguez. Baron. I got to tell you, when I'd heard they got to you, mm. they got you. Well, <clears throat> they didn't quite get me. I'm still here. What happened? They hit us hard. It was very fast. And, uh... <clears throat> Don't exactly remember clearly all of it. I think they must have been watching, probably for a while. Good intel. We weren't even at any of our usual places. They had uh, some kind of weird, I don't know, uh, like a heat weapon. 
very hot. A lot of troops, guns, grenades, uh, strange, I don't know, red gas, red mist, red fog. Not pleasant. Sorry about your people. Anything left of the Maharani? It's a uh, TBD what's going to be salvageable there. You might find it advantageous to lay a little lower, at least for the time being. I hear they're gone, is it true? For the time being. Victor, everything in this world is only for a little while. <sighs> That's ironic, coming from an immortal. You ever meet any of us who lived forever? Actually, maybe one who's gonna get pretty close, but I get your point. I want you to know something. I was not three, four blocks away from the last round when they hit me, but I made a point not to go there because I didn't want to lead them on to you. I appreciate that. We weren't there anyway, but still, thanks. What happened to my son? Yeah, sorry it didn't go better for him. I'm happy it didn't go worse. Good fighter. He, uh, he was heroic. I got him out, but uh, they put me down and somebody else had to get me out. I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm happy to hear that because from what I understand, everyone who is currently unaccounted for is probably going to remain unaccounted for. Hmm, you sure? No. I saw the Prince and the Seneschal. They were in the same mousetrap I was. I can't help but believe if we haven't heard from them since, we're not going to. Vannevar is not the type to be quiet if he doesn't have to be. Good riddance, I say. You hear, uh, you hear about the announcement? The declaration? Yes. I'm okay with that, but, well, you know my position on things. If you want to paint the target on your back, Victor, I'll back you up to a point. I think we just got conclusive mathematical proof that there's already targets on all of our backs. That's nothing new. Camarilla will be back, sure, we know that, and probably this, whatever they were, these hunters will be back too, some night, of course. These threats are omnipresent. It's how we meet these moments that's the measure of us. And I don't intend to measure myself by being a frontline leader. I have other concerns, Victor. I have things of my own I'm doing. I'm not saying I'm turning my back on you. I'm saying that the target's yours. You know, I told all of you from the beginning it would come to this. You didn't hear me disagree, did you? I'm sorry about your son again. I don't know how much experience you have with, well, some call them ghouls, but those who work with us, they heal fast, faster than mortals, but he took a lot of damage. <sighs> it's at this point that Mark stirs in the bed his Mouth cracked and dry from experiences of being damaged and healing here in the hospital. Form a whisper. Nines. Nines. Hmm. He's here, son, and so am I. He's out of it. He can't hear us. Still, 
It was you he was calling for. We spent a lot of time together lately. What about Isaiah, his brother? As far as I know, he's still out of this, just like you wanted. Almost none of this is going down like I wanted, but you're right. As far as I know, he's out and safe. His mother, his sister, all out and safe. I didn't want this for Mark, but it's been very clear to me for a long time that what I wanted for him was not what was going to come to pass, so. Heavy is the head. Apparently. Hmm. But. Suits you, though. You know, uh, <laughs> this is going to sound terrible, hmm. but here's the reality of the situation. I saw an opportunity. We've been scattered, diffused, picking at each other, and right now, at this exact second, the board is as clear as it has been in decades and probably will be again. There's me, there's you, there's Nellie. Not much else. It's a good time to reorganize the board, so to speak. If that is your main concern, sure. My main concern is making sure that when those fuckers return, and I do mean fuckers plural, we are ready for them and not quite so easily set back. To still a wall? Yeah. I think she got my message saying that uh, I had her back, but I think I talked to Jeanette maybe once before everything went wrong. Didn't really get to ask X too much about it, but before they got hit, she still seemed to be up and around. She's around. I've seen her. She planning on staying in Santa Monica? Yeah. I told her maybe she should uh, consider a change of venue, but doubt it. You know what she's like. I do. You, uh... I know you said you haven't seen McNeil in a while. No. You got any way to get word to him? Well, I used to. I could try again. What's the point? I hear he's done with all this. Still, I'd like to know that he knows some of us are carrying on the fight. The fight. It's all we have left, isn't it? I told you you couldn't sit this one out. I told you this was not one for the sidelines. You were right. For what it's worth, I... Uh, you were right to want to. I know. You should want to sit more out, too. <laughs> the fight'll be there. The problem is, when I sit it out, I see who takes the stage. Nah, man. Nah, man. Have it your way. Look, uh, I have some things I have to do tonight. You want some time alone? He knows what I have to say. And I take my rosary, and I open Mark's hand, and I put it in his hand. His hand clasps around the beads grips it tightly. It's, uh, better he not know where I am. Hmm. Not my decision. But, I'll respect it. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. You know what I mean? <laughs> Here, I thought we were going to do some Grand Arthurian Council, you know, round table shit. But yeah, let's go raise a cup. Why not? Some other night. Some other night. Some other night.
probably too soon. Sooner than I want. I tried peace. I tried diplomacy. Next time we do it the hard way. And won't that be interesting? Mm. Come on, let's get out of here. And I do lean down and I actually kiss Mark on his head like he's a little boy. Because he still is to me. He stirs in his sleep and murmurs something that you can't hear. This seems an appropriate place to conclude this conversation and begin a new one. It is the middle of the night in a particularly secluded ravine in the heart of Griffith Park. Gosh. Yeah. Uh. I've uh. not seen you for some time. I... Yeah, well, I was kind of wondering where you were, but uh, I suppose it's only fitting I find you here. I do like it here. What happened to you? <laughs> the second uh, I mean... position, I assume? Same as yeah. the <sighs> Somehow I wish that would... That'd make things a lot easier, but... <sighs> Eva... You happened to me. Before you... Katya and Vera and I had... Had a good thing going. Before you, before Katya's favorite showed up again in our lives, before she, before she put her neck out with the Camarilla for you, before she ignored going to look for Vera for you, Before, before Griffith Observatory, when she came there for you. And this, is because of what she did for you. She told me to call off the search for Vera, and we were going to go after Aurora. Because apparently, apparently Aurora figured out what happened to Rodrigo. Where's Katya? You know, it's... It's... Where is you, she? You were her favorite. You were her favorite. And... She... She loved you. And it's amazing what we do for the people that we love. I, I don't think that there's a world where Katya could have ever beaten Aurora. And I told her that as we were going to try and take her down, but she... She wouldn't hear it. She knew that Aurora being around meant that you were in danger. (sighs) 
and, and we tried. You know. Oh, oh, we tried, but. Gotcha. Finally free. <laughs> what? I hope she's at peace. <sighs> it's all I can. Katya. <laughs> oh. Uh, I. Katya didn't die at peace. Katya lived and died worrying about you. Worrying about what you were going to do next. Worrying about if you were safe. Worrying about how you were going to live your unlife. That's how she lived. That's how she died. And honestly, to try and fucking make some sense of that is the only reason I am here. Look, the Camarilla is not in town anymore. For all I know, I am the highest ranking member of the Camarilla in town, and I want to get out of here as quickly as possible. But I'm here because of what I owe Katya. And Katya lived her life and made the ultimate sacrifice for your life. So you better fucking do something good with it. I will. Thank you, Bosch, for telling me this. Yeah. And before I let go, I'm going to unleash Zeus's fury to his body. The lightning pulsates, arcs, <laughs> smolders from your flesh to his <laughs> wounded flesh. Like Vera, like Katya, like so many, he passes from this world. This is where we will close the scene. And then move to a different conversation. This conversation also takes place in a medical facility at the bedside of Mark Temple. Seriously wounded, but still alive. Unconscious, but healing slowly. Annabelle, when you were shown into the room and asked if you'd like to be left alone, you said yes? Yeah, thank you. Mark's body is in repose, but he is living, he is breathing. He is hooked up to an array of machines that monitor his condition. The bandages that cover his wounds are quite visible. It's easy to see, even without medical training, that he has been very badly hurt. And the doctors told you that when he arrived here, they weren't certain that he would live. They list his condition now as stable, and the prognosis seems good. In his hand, he's clutching an object that may be familiar to you. 
Oh, well. Guess your dad was here. He really does love you. And Isaiah. He really does want to take care of all of us. I just worry that the more he lets his beast out, the more likely it is that he'll get killed grabbing for power. But he tries his best. Mark, I'm sorry. And I don't know if you can hear me, but I know that this is a hundred percent my fault. I absolutely should not have been selfish enough to contact you, to try to hope for a normal life again with you and L. I'm sorry. I have to leave Los Angeles. I don't know for how long. Elle's coming with me and um, X too when, when, when Jasper finds out what's wrong with him. Adrian was right. I don't know how to live without a fight. I don't know who I am if I don't have a revolution when I'm not fighting the status quo. And at this point, I don't know if that's who I was when I was alive or what has become of me because of my beast. And now that <laughs> there's peace of a sort in Los Angeles, I, I have to go. There's no place for a soldier in peacetime. Marks. Fingers. Move. Just a little. You take his hand. It's warm. Alive. And you can feel just the faintest of squeezes. You told me you're gonna be okay. I know Nines will take care of you, and Victor from afar, and definitely Nellie. I love you. I'm still in love with you. I can't drag you out of this across the country. But when you wake up, I hope you'll come join me. We can be on the front lines again. Somehow. Except that the Annabelle that you knew is different than the Annabelle that's leaving now. So I hope that you still like her. The door to the room, which has been half ajar at this time, swings open, and Mark's doctor enters. I'm sorry, uh, I didn't know anybody was in here. She is uh, middle-aged, she has uh, pretty cool eyeglasses on and a, a lab coat and a stethoscope around her neck. Are you family? Yes. Well, somebody close, yes. Mm. 
he should pull through. And he has other visitors regularly? There have been some, yes. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez has looked in, and uh, I believe the boy's father, Mr. Temple, has been here at least once. At least once, huh? That's very good of him. It helps when you talk to him. Uh, people should be with him, read to him. I can't guarantee that he can hear you, but studies show that it does help. Um, will you be able to come back? I hope so. Hmm. Do you want to leave a number where you can be reached? Yeah. Well, he'll know how to find me. All right. I need to finish my round, so. Thank you so much. I'll give you a little bit more time. We're, uh, we're nearly at the end of our visiting hours for the day. Yes, absolutely. Just Excuse me. Last moment, thank you. I want to come back someday, and I'm going to need to come back. But there are good fights all over that are going to need me and L and X. So until you can join us, just know that you are unforgettable in every way. Mark. And I gently kiss him on the lips. This is a good place to close this scene. So we will and we will look in on another. Griffith College, where all of this, this story began. A certain room in a certain building that includes a certain ruined chair and three monsters. been a while since we been here. Evidently, since the furniture's all torn up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ramona still owes me for that. But the sense of uh, poetic symmetry is not lost on me. <laughs> Started with the three of us in this room, and yeah. here I guess it ends. Yeah. I don't, um... It just doesn't work, you know? You two have drive and aspirations. I don't, I don't live at the same level. Regardless of, I'm not talking about like street level versus underground, I'm talking about hmm. you live at a higher level than I do. And I, look, the, there's something they say about Nosferatu that we're turned because we want, they, it's to show what we are on the inside. I'm this on the inside. I'm not, it's gonna take a lot for me to be n not a monster. I'm farther down that track than any one of us that we hang out with. So I have some stuff I need to figure out. Mm. So I can't be part of this team, regardless of if it was even still a thing. You already know what I think. You both know, I already said it. It's 
they got us when we were apart. You've, you gotta go, you gotta go, man. I didn't chase you down since the junkyard. I'm not gonna chase you down now. I know, but it's just, you know, a different way of looking at it. From my perspective, they hit us because I was associated with you. Because you were the most visible. You too were the most visible. Yeah. I mean, and to a certain extent, Eva caused a lot of fucking problems. But she's gone now, so what the fuck? The fuck do I do? So where are you gonna go? I mean, I won't be... I'm not going anywhere. I have things I have to do. I have to... I have to fix X. Archangel still relies on me. I'll still be where I am. Okay. I just don't... I just don't want anyone to call me. Understood. Does our arrangement still stand? Yeah, it still stands. Business is business, but I can't be... I can't be the hammer anymore. Understood. I can't come in to murder things and take care of problems and... Agreement withstanding. Notwithstanding. Whatever. I, I don't... I don't want to be a murderer anymore. Hmm. I don't want to murder people. I don't want to... I don't want to be a monster. You know what I think? I think you just don't want to be sad all the time, and quite frankly, you deserve that. If That's there's cool. peace for you anywhere, I hope you find it. Me you too. do deserve it. And you know where to find us if you need us. I do. Um, look, Victor, I don't... As I said before, I don't hate you. You and I are just very, very different. I won't... You do what's best for you. You know what you're doing. You're the... The guy in charge. But if you need me for whatever reason and it better be good you talk to my baron because that's where I live so you talk to her fine and speaking of that we should probably look at the map and establish this boundary here because I do control Hollywood. Never said you didn't. Okay, so any decisions that have to be done with Hollywood, including sticking people on my safe area, needs to go through me. Your area wasn't safe. Hmm. They already were there. You don't know what I have. I think it doesn't matter, we won. Did we? In as much as winning is, yeah. Just a battle, not the war. Yeah. It seems that you think you know everything on the chessboard, Victor. I've kind of had a pretty successful track record of saying what the next moves would be. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting about that. Have you heard of the saying about playing chess against a pigeon? I thought that was me and Vannevar, but yeah, uh-huh. I've heard it too. Look, man, you want to know, we already established what the difference between me and him is. Do you want to know what the difference between me and you is? Sure. You're worried about Hollywood. I'm worried about all of us. L.A., California, Anarchs, Kindred, Worldwide. That's mm -hmm. what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Yes. It's good. So yes, keep you the got, big picture in mind, King. You got Hollywood. Nine still has his thing. Jeanette's got her thing going in Santa Monica. I get it. Mm -hmm. The just the whole point. Whatever. How is everyone taking the wrong message from this? That unity is not our greatest strength. We didn't say it wasn't. You just have to learn to ask permission before you make a decision that involves other people. Hmm. Because I don't want to. But by the rules that we live by, 
If you make this difficult, I don't want to come for you. Because I don't make the decisions. Look, man. You know I love you. You know I love you. I go back further than anybody, but I will tell both of you the same as I tell anybody else. You want to take a shot? Don't miss. It won't be me taking the shot, dear. <sighs> you know what's funny? Like, just a little while ago, I sat in a room with Vannevar, Suzanne, Katya, Ebe, and Eva, having my unlife threatened. I wasn't afraid of them. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of anyone. I have done everything I could do in my power to keep both of you and all of us safe. And I will continue doing that. You keep doing that, sweetheart. And fix this call of yours because nobody else is going to do it for you. Please do. And the next time I see you will not be on Fairbanks. Look. I'm going to go. I got stuff on my level to deal with. You guys run your city. I don't care. I just... Fuck it. And I leave. You depart the room? <clears throat> the building? Yeah, I just go. I... You are going. Yeah. There is... an old saying that goes, you can get what you said you wanted and still not be happy. For the kindred, this seems true more often than not. This seems an appropriate place to end this conversation. But we will look in on another. We return to Hollywood, not far from Griffith College. We are in the fenced-in courtyard outside a large commercial building, a building that is conspicuously new in this neighborhood. Its neighbors are significantly older. The signs of recent construction are clearly evident, but there are no people here, only kindred. Thanks for coming. I felt like it was appropriate to be here. When Nick killed me, or I met Carver the first time. Such good memories. You and I define good very differently, but uh, see you, see Whatever that monstrosity is, is that an RV? Yeah. It is an RV. It's uh, not new, but it's not ancient either. It is evident that the windows in the rear have been blacked out. It's so tacky, but if that's what you want to travel in, I guess that's what you're going to travel in. Thanks, Ma. Hmm. <laughs> I figure I kind of want to fly under the radar, getting to New York. New York. That's the next move, New York. Yeah. Camarilla still have a stranglehold on the city. Indeed. Be careful. Yeah, well, I'll do my best. Not really my style. For what it's worth, where it is, Prince Thomas is fairly level-headed, but what does that even mean anymore? Bonhart, Prince Bonhart. I mean, compared to Vannevar, I mean, it's, that's a pretty low bar to clear. But, yeah. I think that 
my place is in feeding the flames of rebellion. I'm gonna miss you all a lot. I'm so grateful for everything. And you're still a family. You broke my heart once, Annabelle, by leaving. And now you're gonna do it again. Annabelle takes Nellie's hands. I love you. I'll try to come back if I can. This time, tell me when you're coming back. I will text you every day. And now that you know what an uwu is, <laughs> you know, you'll be able to understand a lot of what I'm sending. And enjoy New York Fashion Week, please. <laughs> I'll let you send me some pea coats. Okay. You know, I know this sounds crazy coming from me of all people, but in light of recent events, maybe don't text every day. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll WhatsApp you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, this isn't ever, I mean, obviously you got to me, you got, I don't know how she got to you, but where's X, where's Jasper? Like, this isn't, if this isn't the full fellowship. X can't make it. You came. Yeah, I came. Well, X is gonna. X is. You can. X is resting. I'm going to figure it out, but he needs some, he needs a nap. He'll, um, if I figure it out, I'll make sure you know. Thank you. Yeah. He's safe, I assume. Y no one's going to find him. I got, uh, we put him in a. In a place people forgot about. Uh, are you... I haven't seen this you since... Way back when. It's the White Witch of Griffith Park. <laughs> I'm good. I'm, I'm good, yes. Um, while you're all here, though, I should know that Aurora shouldn't be an issue anymore for anyone. Oh shit. How's that possible? It's possible. A lot less Camarilla here uh, nowadays. Annabelle, don't forget who you are. It's the most beautiful thing is your humanity. Thank you. I'll do my best. You can. What about you? I have some plans, but... Nothing is set in stone, but... I don't think you'll be seeing me for a while either. <laughs> Thanks. Um, you're different now, which is good. And you're going where I hoped you would. You didn't get there the way I thought, but I'm proud of you. <laughs> Things don't change. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, be careful. Thank you. Thank you for taking care of X. And please take care of these chuckleheads. They can take care of themselves. They don't need me. Um, that's not true. You and I both know that's not true. But also... I mean, you know. Yeah. 
you don't have to be a part of this or, or, you know, be part of the band anymore, but I hope you know that you're not alone. I know. Be careful. New York's a lot different. I grew up there. Really? Yeah. It's... It's taller. Oh. And deeper. Um... But be careful. And if you see, um... If you meet a Nosferatu named Alonzo, punch him in the fucking face. You got it. Just be safe. Thanks, Jasper. All of you. And Jasper fades out again. Jasper is no longer seen. You all uh, know where and how to find me. Anything. Anything. It's done. Yep. And you know the life of the party. You can always come back to it. Thank you, Nelly, for accepting your role as mom. Yeah, just don't spread it around the whole place, you know. Secrets have a way of getting out. Evidently. (laughs) If that shouldn't be like the motto of our lives, I don't know what is. Well, it definitely seems like something I should make a note of. (laughs) So while I do that, let's conclude this scene. Griffith Park Observatory is one of the very best places in Los Angeles to observe the sunrise. And it is very close to sunrise when we visit. There is an individual there, perhaps admiring the view, but perhaps pacing impatiently at the same time. And for a change in our story, this visitor is mortal. Hello. Oh my. Hello. Thank you for meeting me. Thank you for the call. I... I'm glad that someone... alive is with me right now. Why is that? It's been a long time. And I felt... Things weren't right, and I fought as hard as I can against it, and I can't prevail. But everything that I've worked towards has been for humanity. Really? I have some things for you. Hmm. You don't say. No. Pull out a bag that I hand over to him. Ah, bag. And, um... I take a look at it. Are you opening the bag? Not yet. What does it look like? What does it look like? It's just like a large duffel bag. Oh. I've come this far. I'll take a look inside. What does he find? There are books and journals and um, some clothing Hmm. and a bottle, a potion of sorts. 
What am I looking at here? What is this? Uh, all of my notes for the past 74 years now. Wow. The inner workings of the Tremere, the chantries, phone numbers, locations, whatever you might need to continue this fight that you're on because you need to continue. The clothes are warded against my kind. Really? And, uh, this? I wish I could have made more, but not enough time. You give that to perhaps any of your agents or those that a vampire would feed on and it will take them out into torpor at least that is uh (laughs) that is quite the considerable gift well what you are doing is noble is it You think so? Yes. Why? We are monsters as much as we try to attain and hold on to that which makes us human. It's almost as if our curse is to forever slip and forever be taken away from that. The longer we walk this earth, The further away from it, we will drift, whether we would like to or not. I imagine you have more than a, uh, a lengthy experience in that. (laughs) You've been around a considerably long time. I think long enough. Hmm. Yeah. Well. I will continue the hunt. You will? Good. Good. I will not stop. You must not let them sway you. (laughs) Never. Never. If Demetrios, Adrian, the whole thing, has taught me anything, resolve is the most important attribute. That is what gives humanity the edge. Yes, I would agree with that. But there are things, and you will read soon enough, that will make your fight very difficult. That's good. I don't want it to be easy. As I told, uh, as I told Nelly, I like a challenge. I see. Is there anything else that I could tell you? Please, I will take all the help I can get. <clears throat> Eva. Agent Handler. The faintest, earliest trace of dawn is showing above the eastern horizon. I don't want to put a kibosh on a pretty great party, but uh, it appears your your time is is running out. (sighs) If you're seeing what I'm seeing. Yes. You uh, have a plan for that? You know, I'm not sure yet. I've seen a lot of things, but it's been a long time since I've seen the sun rise. Uh There is a myth, a story I read about a long time ago now, that a vampire could strive and and strengthen their own humanity so much that 
they might become human again themselves. <laughs> Do you think that could be possible? I've seen a lot of strange things since taking this job. And I absolutely think, I absolutely think that that's possible. The thin line of golden sunlight on the horizon has taken on color. Yeah, it's become coral pink. And you can begin to see traces of color play against the high clouds on the eastern horizon. It's going to be a beautiful day, soon. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by this. I, I want to know. I want to know where that line is. Where's the line between human and monster? <laughs> and in order to find that, we're going to need to get you someplace safe. Even at this early stage of the sunrise, Eva, you can feel the tiny pinpricks of pain across your skin. Uh. But how could you have a monster in your midst? You could never know you were safe, ever. Safety's limited. Agent Handler, the air around Eva begins to shimmer a little bit like a heat mirage in summer. And you think you can see just the faintest traces of steam or smoke begin to rise from her shoulder. Are you, are you, are you? Are you going to be okay? Is uh, we need we need to get you out of this 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 light. We need to do something quickly, or or are you going to explode or or something? I don't know. I don't know what happens next. And here is where we end this conversation. It is not enough just to create a tale. Vivid images must flash past the engaged minds and faces of those who witness it. Noises, scents, sensations must fill their world. Even the taste of existence should flow through them as they watch and listen. Here is the essence of story. Uh, here it can have life and meaning beyond the voices of its creators. The story is not created by one or by a few. It's created by many. And together they forge new uh, ground, new ideas, and they become far more than any of them could ever be alone. There are so many to whom we owe our heartfelt gratitude and appreciation for making this story happen. Not the least of which, the players of the characters we have come to know so intimately. These players were the people who were faced with the challenge of portraying monsters. And they were forced to consider how to play them in ways that we, the living, could relate to. I am grateful eternally to each and every one of them. Beyond my capacity to express with mere words for being part of this story. But the magic you see in front of the cameras is created no less by those behind it. You'll find our full list of thanks on our social media in the days ahead. But while I'm here, I want to thank the cast that was present in the season and those who could not be with us, but who graciously allowed us to portray their characters for them. 
I'd like to thank No Vacancy Productions, the people who make this magic happen. Rise Motion Picture Studios, Paradox Interactive and its partners, the World of Darkness brand team, and of course you, our family. There is a very old proverb that says, all good things must come to an end. This LA by Night Chronicle has been a good thing, and this story must conclude. We have journeyed long and far into the night together, and with this coterie, we have learned a great deal about the world of darkness and about ourselves. Is this the last time that we will see these characters? Probably not. They're still out there in the night. They still have stories to be told. These stories might appear in different ways or through different mediums, but their secrets will get out because secrets always do. So, once again, here is where we end our vampire story. For now. <laughs>